What's up everyone? Welcome to another Joel Arsena YouTube video. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I do appreciate it. In today's video, we are going to be doing some powder coating on my 1100 triple that I ported in the last video. If you haven't seen that, be sure to go and check it out. In the next video in this series, we are going to be installing the Zealtronic CDI, so stay tuned for that. Before we get into this video, I thought I would briefly explain why this video didn't come out on Sunday. On Wednesday, Megan informed me that her parents, who were traveling through the States, were driving through Nevada towing their travel trailer when their truck started to shake violently and black smoke started to roll out of it. It is a 2013 GMC with a 6.6 Duramax, I believe, and they had it towed into a garage where they were told that it has a hole through the top of the piston. It's going to take them a month to get a new engine for it, they did not have any access to a rental car or any form of transit. They were basically stranded there, and so I drove down to get them. I left on Friday morning at 6 a.m. It is a 17-hour drive. I drove straight through to get them, stopping only for fuel. And then on the way back, we did stop once at a hotel, which meant that we ended up getting back here on Sunday at 3 p.m. So that's why there was no video on Sunday. My journey to go get them was actually quite nice. I didn't have any drama at the border in either direction. There was no troubles with the Ford Escape that I was driving, and the scenery is quite nice. I've never taken that trip before, so it was quite the experience. It would have been nice if I had a little bit more time to kind of take in the sights and relax a little bit, but I was rushed to get back on Monday, which is today, to do a few service calls that I had already booked. So I've got those service calls out of the way. Now I have some time to do some editing and that's why you guys get to see this video. I just started setting up to do some powder coating and uh, yeah, I'm tripping over stuff and forgetting stuff and this is probably gonna be a disaster. I should probably just wait until tomorrow and start fresh and do it. I can't see where the camera is looking. Pieces are here. Whew. Okay, it is working. I couldn't hear it working. The nice thing about powder coat is that if you screw up, you can just use an air hose and blow it off before you bake it in the oven. Once you bake it in the oven, then it's then it's on there. But anyway, let's uh, try to apply a little powder coat and see what happens here. What is that? There's a little speck of something on here. It probably looks pretty good from there, but I'm looking at it and it needs to be sandblasted again. There is a spot there. GoPros are horrible at focusing. It'll only take me a few minutes to sandblast this off and uh, do it right, I guess. Yeah, I should probably just give up for today because it's one of those days. Uh, I started doing... Today is one of those days where I probably just should have slept all day because nothing is going my way. I just tried to do some sandblasting on the head, which actually didn't turn out too bad considering I didn't turn the air compressor on. I had turned the air compressor off because it turns on when I'm filming and it ruins my clips. The clips that I recorded of sandblasting it were at like 20, 30 PSI. Then I go to take it out of the cabinet and I slipped somehow taking it out and dropped the head. Fortunately, it landed on the bolt that I'm using to hold it up and bent the bolt instead of damaging the head. The color looks pretty bland on the camera compared to what it looks like in real life. It's not the most ridiculous lime green, but I think it's a little bit more intense than it is on camera. Not gonna touch the door. 
I don't think I actually told you guys, but this is an intake manifold off of a 900. The difference being that it doesn't have the pipe that connects them. Uh, I wanted to try it to see if it worked any different or yeah, it saves a few grams and I'm a weight weenie. I'm just gonna say it. If we look at the part from this side, actually the lighting's pretty poor, but if we look at the part from this side, it actually looks pretty good, pretty even uniform coating. But as soon as we come over here, that is not an optical illusion. There is no powder on each side of these inlets. And that's one of the problems with powder coating, at least with the cheap equipment that I have. I believe this is what they call a Faraday cage or Faraday effect. The basic way that these systems work, I believe it creates a negative charge in the part and a positive charge in the powder and that makes the two things stick together. Well, because the metal is a conductor and magic and science, it creates areas that actually reject the powder. The only way to get the powder to go on there uniformly is actually to bake this in the oven, get it nice and hot, and then actually put the powder on hot. All right, one, two, three. All right, that worked. Other than dropping my feeler gauge set on the floor and almost into the wash bucket, that went really well, all things considered. So the head and the intake, I think that's pretty good actually. We still have the cases, the cylinder, the exhaust manifold, the exhaust elbow and the exhaust pipe at the very least and also the stator cover I remembered, which I haven't even sandblasted. So maybe I'll sandblast the stator cover now, I need to remove the coils to do that. When I was visiting Jacob, I thought that he had given me a 750 stator cover because we wanted to see if it would actually work on the 1100. Uh, I think he was fairly certain that it would, or maybe he's actually been running one. Anyway, the 1100 stator cover, you guys may remember, I skeletonized and started to lighten one of mine and uh, then I ended up not using it because the stator, anyway, I ended up not using it. But this has a cooling jacket on it. This is actually quite heavy. We'll weigh them and see what the difference in weight is. Yes, I'm a weight weenie, so what? Uh, this is considerably heavier. So I went looking through a bit of parts that clip probably didn't turn out and I found the stator cover that Jacob gave me. So very cool. The 1100 stator cover is two pounds, 4.9 ounces or 1047 grams. The 750 stator cover is one pound, 9.4 ounces or 721 grams, which is 326 grams lighter. That's like three quarters of a pound in the difference. That is a great weight savings. There we go. Very nice. Well, there you have it, our beautiful green head and our beautiful green intake manifold. You can see I coated the inside of it as well as the outside. All right, so I guess tomorrow we will do a few more bits. Maybe we'll get everything done.
It is now the following day. I did a little bit of sandblasting. I got the exhaust manifold, the exhaust elbow, and the stator cover sandblasted. The stator cover should be fairly easy to deal with because I can hang it from this threaded point here. I'm not gonna do the inside of it. It'll probably get some overspray and I'm fine with that, but I'm not gonna focus on getting the inside of it. The exhaust manifold also has a threaded hole in it. I have a very strong feeling I'm gonna end up hot coating most of this stuff because there's a lot of intricate details on here that just aren't gonna get covered with this cheap uh, powder coating gun, so yeah. Now we need to wait 20 minutes, let the stuff warm up, and then I'll put a hot coat on. I assume this part will cool pretty quickly so I don't have a whole lot of time to coat it. It is going to cool the oven off considerably, but it is, uh oh, the only real practical way to go about doing this, if we can call anything I do practical. Put this back in. Oh wow, the stator cover is looking good, folks. That cooled it down to 193. I think I already said this, but I have a fair amount of time to deal with this because it is a big old chunk of metal and it will stay hot for quite some time. Oh, one of the nice things about powder coating is it's pretty hard to get a run like you would with paint. And that's good because I just dumped a bunch of powder directly on a spot and I was like, oh, that's going to run for sure, but it didn't. <laughs> All right, I'm going to set a half hour timer. I'm going to try to get the coating on the elbow and I'm going to do sandblasting on the main pipe itself and uh, then we'll coat them. I just spent what is probably way too much time figuring out how I was gonna hang the crankcase halves from the rack. I decided to bolt them together. I made a little piece of cardboard to cover up the, uh, yeah, I'll just show you. It is hanging from four points, which keeps it fairly well balanced. And I've got a bungee taped on here that hopefully stays in place and suspends it while I'm coating it. Under here, I made a cardboard gasket cover thing. I wasn't gonna bother trying to coat inside here because I didn't think it was gonna work, but it seems to be working really well. I'm not gonna get too fussy about it, but I'll put on a coat.
I have tried to coat stuff like that before for a long, long time and had zero success. It is blowing my mind how good this is working and I have no idea why, but I'm just gonna run with it. Okay, that went pretty well, I guess. I just got done doing some sandblasting and pulled the cases out of the oven. And all I have to say is, wow, my face is dirty, I think, unless those are just shadows. But also, this powder coat, this black, I'll get the name of it for you guys. It is amazing it is like that factory semi-gloss black what do they call it blackjack i'm gonna try to show you guys here i know it won't show up on camera how it does in person but wow absolutely beautiful i'm wondering how badly the cases will be stuck together because I did bolt the cases together and then put a fairly thick layer of powder coat. So yeah, they might not want to come apart, but wow, that is gorgeous. I'm loving that. I was wondering if I wanted to do the cylinders the same color, but wow, yes, I do. I definitely do. This is probably one of the best ideas that I've ever had. I need to mask off this gasket surface. If I use a bolt to come through this side, that will block this area from being coated. So I came up with this as a solution. I got a little piece of mechanics wire. I bend it around this bolt. Once it's bent 180 degrees around the bolt, I take a pair of pliers, make a little bend on each side at about 90 degrees. Then I can take this, shove it in the hole, it holds my cardboard in place and it doesn't get in the way of powder coating. Absolutely genius. Wow. This powder works so nice. It is this much time later and I am really excited. I'm about to pull the cylinder out and it is going to look amazing. Let's check the temperature of it before we pull it out. 206 degrees Celsius. Let's pull the cylinders out and hang them from the rack before I burn my fingers or my hands or my face or any other body parts. Wow, that looks amazing. That is so good. That is beautiful. Look at that finish. That is beautiful. That factory semi-gloss, wow. The lighting isn't nearly as good on this side, but it is 
It is still quite hot. I put some of the other engine parts on it to help pull some of that heat out. But man, does that look beautiful. That is amazing. I hope you guys like it half as much as I do. I, I thought maybe it was going to be boring because I was making it black, but that is beautiful. As I'm sure you guys can tell, I am really happy with the way this powder coating turned out. I really didn't expect for it to come out this well. The powder coating equipment that I'm using, I actually purchased back in either 2003 or 2004 to powder coat some automotive car parts. It was a fairly inexpensive kit at the time, and uh, I don't think you can even buy one that cheap from the supplier anymore. They've actually upgraded it to a dual voltage unit which allows you to get uh, powder to stick in places where mine won't necessarily make it stick, which is why I did all of the hot coating, which works quite well, but it does add some steps. And uh, yeah, as you guys saw, the risk of burning yourself. Anyway, the next video in this series will be the build series of the engine. I've actually completed building it and have it mostly reinstalled in the hull. I have started working on the... I guess preparations for installing the Zealtronic CDI, which will be coming soon. I'm hoping that it goes well. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of tinkering around to try to figure out what I'm going to do with an e-box or what I'm going to do about an e-box. I haven't really decided how I'm going to lay all that out, but I'm starting to babble now. So I am going to end this video here. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. It's going together. The head is not bolted on. The stator cover is just sitting on there for the photo op. But uh, yeah, the crank is in, the pistons are in, the cylinder is bolted down, the intake is on, the exhaust is on. So I'm most of the way done.